back to our channel so by this simple diagram today we are going to start the brachial plexus so actually it's a very simple topic so what is present in brachial uh, plexus is always to remember first you'll have a root so think, uh, think of a tree so now you are in garden there's a tree so tree first uh, from the base first you'll have the root next you'll have the trunk next you'll have the divisions and after that the cord and the branches so first we'll start with the root so mainly the roots are from C5 to T1, so C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. So these are all involved in our brachial plexus. So this is the root value. So C5 to T1, and these are in turn divided into trunks. So mainly C5 and C6 together form the upper trunk. C7 alone will form the middle trunk, whereas C8 and T1 together will form the lower trunk. So mainly there are six roots. So here you can write down that total roots are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sorry. Total you have 5 roots. That is C5 to T1. So this 5 roots are converting into 3 trunks. So total trunks are 3 in number. So total 5 roots, 3 trunks. So this 5 roots will form the 3 trunks. That is C5, C6 from upper trunk, C7 from middle trunk, C8, T1 from the lower trunk so now the trunk is in turn divided into divisions so total divisions are 1 2 3 4 5 6 so total divisions are 6 in number that is ventral and dorsal so every every trunk is divided into ventral and dorsal divisions so this ventral and dorsal divisions they meet together from the cords so total number of cords are again 3 in number so cords are 3 trunk is 3 but the division is 6 and the roots are 5 and number of branches we will discuss it later so if you see mainly the ventral division of upper trunk and the ventral division of middle trunk together they unite to form the lateral cord right so lateral cord is formed from two ventral divisions what are those two ventral divisions one is from the upper trunk one is from the middle trunk so upper and middle trunks ventral divisions together form the lateral cord next coming to the medial cord medial cord is formed by only one uh, part one division that is the ventral division of lower trunk so lower trunk ventral division alone will form the medial cord Whereas coming to the posterior cord, it is formed by three dorsal divisions. So if you see dorsal division of upper trunk, dorsal division of middle trunk, dorsal division of lower trunk. All these three together unite to form the posterior cord. So once again we'll revise it. Only this is twist here, all the others are very easy. So you see here C5, C6 together form upper trunk, C7 alone will form middle trunk, C8, T1 will form the lower trunk. So these trunks are in turn divided into ventral and dorsal. But the thing is here how to form a cord so to form a cord cords are mainly three in number lateral cord middle cord posterior cord so lateral cord is mainly formed by fusion of ventral division of upper trunk and ventral division of middle trunk both together form the lateral cord and only the ventral division of lower trunk alone will form the medial cord always you remember in the middle or medial they are formed always alone so like that you can remember middle or medial always formed alone because middle is formed from c7 right whereas here, here also the medial is forming only from the ventral division of lower trunk right so middle is always alone because it's only forming from one in in case of trunk also it is formed from c1 in case of cord also it is formed only from ventral division of lower trunk next coming to posterior it's very simple all the three all the three dorsal divisions of upper trunk middle trunk lower trunk fuse together to form the posterior cord so this is how you will find the cords this is how the cords are formed now coming to the branches if you see the branches i have made them with this blue arrow to easily find out so if you see from the root you can find mainly two branches that is from c5 you will find one branch and from c5 c6 c7 all three together to form one branch so what is that branch name c5 c6 c7 three together will form the will form the long thoracic nerve so long thoracic nerve is nothing but formed by c5 c6 c7 right and c5 alone will form a dorsal scapular nerve which is mainly the nerve to the rhomboidus muscle so C5, C6, C, C5, C6, C7 form a long thoracic nerve and it supplies the serratus anterior whereas C5 is giving origin to dorsal scapular nerve and it is a nerve to rhomboidus. So now coming to the upper trunk. So in the roots 
mainly have two divisions right so if you want you can write here root have two branch right one is dorsal scapula another one is long thoracic and the trunk in the trunk also especially you have upper trunk upper trunk only have two branches so what are the two branches of upper trunk those are nothing but suprascapular nerve and the nerve to subclavius so their root value along with root value now we are learning right c5 is the root value for dorsal scapular nerve c5 c6 c7 is root value for long thoracic nerve then what will be the uh, root value for the branches of upper trunk like uh, suprascapular nerve and nerve to subclavius you can guess it it's nothing but c5 plus c6 because c5 plus c6 only together form the upper trunk so as i said the trunk upper trunk have two branches their root value is c5 c6 whereas here in this two branches one is uh, root value c5 other one is c5 c6 c7 right so we'll write down root values here so this is about upper trunk so upper trunk have two branches remember that names one is suprascapular that is mainly supply, supplying the suprascapillaris muscle and infrascapillaris muscle and next you have the nerve to subclavius which will of course supply the subclavius muscle so these are all the muscles uh, the subclavius or suprascapillar they are related to scapula right so you can remember trunk is related to scapula huh? root is related to scapula and also to the serratus anterior now coming to the divisions if you see in divisions there are no branches for the divisions coming to the cord in cord again you will find the many branches so in cord you will find many branches so first coming from the lateral cord if you see lateral cord lateral cord will have three branches so lateral cord will have three branches right this is this one one two three so what are the three branches and its root value the root value is same for all three branches that is from c5 to c7 how we will check out you can see here c5 c6 is for ventral part of upper trunk right see the why c7 is coming here because you know the lateral cord is forming from the ventral division of upper trunk and also ventral division of middle trunk as middle trunk is c7 so just add them c5 c6 c7 is for the uh, lateral cord root value so lateral cord root values c5 to c7 and they have three branches three branches have same root value right so what are those three branches so the three branches are first one is the lateral pectoral so this is the lateral pectoral in the name you can see from the lateral cord of course you'll get lateral pectoral right and also you'll get the musculocutaneous and also you'll get the lateral root of median so lateral root of median is this one so these three branches you can remember by a mnemonic like l m l right so what is l here lateral pectoral what is m here musculocutaneous what is another l here lateral root of median now so these are three branches of lateral cord and its root value is c5 to c7 done now next go to the medial cord so medial cord is totally having the five branches so medial cord will have the five branches and what would be its root level let us find out so the medial cord will give rise to medial pectoral so what would be the medial pectoral this one so for this also you have a mnemonic by writing first let us you can find out this is medial pectoral right and another one is medial cutaneous nerve of arm right medial cutaneous nerve of arm another one is medial cutaneous nerve of forearm this one medial cutaneous nerve of forearm another one is ulnar here will be the ulnar and another will be the medial root of median this will be the median as you remember this is lateral root of median this is the medial root of median this together in turn will form a median now right so lateral cut uh, lateral lateral root of median medial root of median lateral root of medium from lateral cord medial root of medial from medial cord both together from the median now right so total branches are five let us see its root value so the root value for medial pectoral and medial cutaneous nerve of arm and also medial cutaneous nerve of forearm are same that is c8 and t1 so why c8 and t1 let us find out because the medial cord is coming from the ventral 
division of lower trunk so lower trunk of course you will have c8 and t1 c8 and t1 together form the lower trunk so its ventral division so nothing but its root value will be c8 and t1 but it's uh, special for the case of ulnar nerve so remember ulnar nerves root value special it has c7 c8 and t1 so it has c7 in it that thing you need to remember in the case of medial cord remember it's also having c7 uh, other all have the common one that is c8 and t1 so this is about medial cord branches what are the posterior cord branches so remember that posterior cord also have total five branches and the root value which is common is c5 and c6 why let us find out you can see the posterior cord is coming from all posterior divisions of upper middle lower so they are having c5 and c6 as a common root value but some nerves are having some different one what are those let us find out in the case of uh, latissimus dorsi now that is thoracodorsal thoracodorsal now will have a root value of c6 c7 and also c8 and also the radial now it will have the value of c5 to t1 all all are in present in radial now so posterior branches are radial now right you have circumflex axillary artery you have lower subscapular artery you have thoracodorsal artery and also you have the upper subscapular artery so upper subscapular lower subscapular so these are all the different branches of posterior cord of brachial plexus so this uh, actually to remember the root values uh, just ignore the uh, common one just uh, catch up the abnormal or unique one so what are the unique ones in all this once again we'll write them out so if you check out these are the three special branches which are having different root values like in the case of ulnar nerve the root value is c7 c8 t1 in the case of thoracodorsal c6 c7 c8 and radial c5 to t1 so if we remember this other all we can easily find out according to the diagram because just matching them which cord like that we can find out but these three are somewhat different so this three only we need to remember so by this we have completed the brachial artery root trunk division cord branches and now we will see the sympathetic innervation so you can see over here that t2 to t6 are sympathetic nerves are forming sympathetic nerves and t2 and t3 are forming mainly vasoconstrictor fibers this thing also you need to remember this both things that t2 to t6 are forming sympathetic nerves and t2 and t3 are forming vasoconstrictor fibers so now in this diagram we will see what is the sympathetic innervation of uh, mixed fibers of root of brachial plexus so mainly the lateral horn give rise to preganglionic fibers so remember that the lateral horn will give rise to preganglionic fibers if you see here in this diagram it's written preganglionic fibers so this one this red color one right if you see here this is a lateral horn so from the lateral horn this red one this is giving the preganglionic sympathetic fibers which are ventral nerve roots pass to the white rami communicants if you see they are passing to the this red one from the lateral horn passing through the white rami communicants right pass to the right uh, pass through white rami communicants reach the sympathetic chain so like this they reach the sympathetic chain right next they ascend within the chain and end in the middle cervical inferior cervical and also first thoracic ganglia remember they ascend within the chain and end in middle cervical from here they'll go to middle cervical inferior cervical and first thoracic ganglia is coming to post ganglionic fibers if you see here this dotted lines these are the post ganglionic fibers the post ganglionic fibers from the middle cervical ganglion pass through the gray rami communicants if you see this dotted line passing through the gray rami communicants right so they pass to the gray rami communicants reach the c7 c8 nerve roots so fibers from first thoracic ganglion also follow above root reach the t1 nerve root 
all these sympathetic fibers mainly pass by roots trunks division cords same like our brachial plexus right branch of plexus so artery of skeletal muscles are ciliated by sympathetic activity for skin these nerves are vasomotor pseudomotor pilomotor so what is the meaning of each and everything we'll see here if you see here vasomotor is nothing but which constrict the arterioles of the skin and pseudomotor which increase the sweat secretion and pilomotor which mainly contract the erector pili muscle to cause the erection of hair so this is all about brachial plexus and sympathetic innervation next we'll complete next in our video we'll complete the axillary artery and also axillary vein lymphatics and after that we'll discuss the clinical anatomy so by that we'll complete the axilla next we'll start the back